Well, you've got to have a great big pair of hairy gonads to get this one out there. And I think if you've watched me before, you'll know that I am definitely a bird with balls to hell with the consequences. This is a paste pattern I'd seen many times before as I'd scrolled through. But it was only five days ago that I decided to have a look at it. The first thing that struck me was that there was only claims showing and there were no diagrams, no specifications and no bibliographic data apart from the inventor's name. It did take me a couple of days to completely understand what this was all about because the terminology within is specific to the invention and you can't find the words anywhere else, they're in no searches or anything. In short, I mean it's quite difficult to summarise, but it's a system that can locate you, tell you when you nod your head, who you see, where you go and a lot lot more, but I'll start with that one. Not only does it tell you all this, it feeds every single bit of information it collects back to the controller, whoever or whatever the controller is. There are over what well, I think 400 claims, all of which are completely vital to the understanding of the patent. So I've made the points as simple and as illustrated as possible, but I've had to divide it into separate sections. And in order to do that, I've had to start out of order. So I'm going to begin by telling you how it works and what its components are. Patent is called FAMS, F-A-M-S, and it's all about a fully automated management system. And the key word here is fully, because boy, everything is managed by this. It's made up of an enterprise network, and I like to think of this as a parcel. So the enterprise network is the big box, and when you open it up, everything inside makes the network. But I should just tell you what an enterprise network is, in this case anyway. It's a physical and virtual network with protocols that connect all users and systems to a network in the data center and cloud. It can work both online and offline, this one can at least. Online, all components are part of the enterprise network at the same time or at separate times with a minimum of two components, one of which must be the headset. This has two headsets, one is called Cyborg and one is called Hallelujah He. The I at the end, I think, just refers to their branding because there are actual headsets called Cyborg and Hallelujah, but they're quite cheap, so I don't think it will be exactly one of them, but along those lines. You can only get access to the components when online, offline, all of the operational commands become independent solutions and will be operated manually without either of the headsets. This patent also revolves around the Cyborg operating system. Now this is an operating system like any other, like Linux, Android, Windows, just like that, except this one is used by ethical hackers. Now these are individuals who are usually employed by an organization and who can be trusted to undertake an attempt to penetrate networks and or computer systems using the same methods as malicious hackers. So for the components, well we've opened our big box, our parcel, and inside we pull out two sets of headphones. These headphones are really important. They act as the central controllers and they communicate all necessary nodes, but mainly the P brain tags. Don't worry, I'll explain that later. Including the necklace, bracelet, ring, and jack. These headphones control all other components and they run from the Cyborg operating system. The company that's designed all these components is MOST and it looks like High H Tech. It's a trademark that, and it's a a trademark you'll see throughout this presentation. As we're unpacking the headsets from our big parcel, we notice stuck to the side of these headsets is a little box and it's called P-Brain Tags. 
and there are P brain tags A, B and C and they're stuck to the headset because these are the interfaces that communicate with the headphones the most. Now the P brain tags A, B or C can be one of four things. They can be antennae, transmitters, receivers or transceivers. These new devices connect via hydrate towers and if you look at my very basic picture I knocked up in paint you'll see I've tried to draw some hydrate towers even though I don't know what they look like. However, these are like regular 5G phone masts and they're combined with small cell networks, base stations, which I've also tried to draw in purple next to the hydrate towers. These base stations may also emit millimeter waves just like the 5G towers to be created for the purpose of extending and operating the full potential of all devices and components. The P-Brain tags are something that you or I could carry. We could wear it as a ring around our neck, as a necklace. It's something small. Think of it like your Tesco's loyalty card that's stuck to your key ring. Something that small that connects us to these uh, lovely towers. This architecture may be an analog to the in-house private networks created for individual companies and it may also be an enhanced version with a lot more power, service range and functionality with an extensive use of millimeter wave chip emitter. If you can look down the bottom of my diagram, that's the MMW chip emitter. It's also known as the radiator in this patent as well as radio frequency chips if needed. So you can, if you want to spend a little bit more money in the, on this wonderful patent, you can, um, you can buy these things as add-ons. The, the cyber operating system may make charts of the complete 5G architecture from a data stream coming from the h Drait towers, culminating this data into a map of the complete infrastructure and physical components, signal transmission areas of range in real time and all of its associated sub-components. There are 48 of these sub-components in our box or in the patent if you like, but I want to keep on talking about the headsets and the P-Brain tags because without these major components nothing else will work so first of all I'm going to explain to you what the headsets actually do you may be the proud owner of the flashiest headphones on the market but they won't be anything like what you're going to hear now these headsets are actually the controls and the interface of the whole enterprise network it has voice command, so you can turn it on or turn it off, or you can use the gloves that it comes with. The headset, I should say, also comes with a screen, an OLED screen. So you can turn it on by touching it with your special gloves, or you can voice command it on. The headset has a screen and with a control panel and applications such as, and this will blow you away, Unreal, X-ray vision, and that is exactly what it says it is X-ray vision. Night vision, 3D vision, perfect recall vision, so it can play back something that you've seen without even recording it. And don't forget, all of this information is being filtered back to the controller of the headsets. Whoever that is, whatever it is, we don't know, it never says. It has laser light, laser uni beam, and this is all part of the uni lens. I'll explain that later. Microscope vision, telescope vision, real time satellite vision, omnivision, distant sound amplifier, sound decreaser, a transcranial device, and it also comes with a 9 volt battery, aura vision, that's A-U-R-A, gaming, lucid dreaming. 
This is what's interesting with this patent as well. There are a couple of things within it that we are told in mainstream media are conspiracy theories and lucid dreaming is one of them. Another one is free energy and that is also a fact and it's in here and I would get on to that maybe in the next video. But lucid dreaming, the settings, we've already seen or heard about a couple of them. It has a video camera, an ion lens, I-O-N lens, wireless bionic earbuds, and these are the really tiny cylindrical with a foam casing that fit comfortably inside the ear. The gloves, I've already mentioned, a training program. This is a training program where um, employers can train employees at home, put them through the test so that they're suitable to just go into their job and do it. It has uni lens display, which we'll come to later. And it's got this um, HI exclamation mark HTECHBSP, it's blockchain. And um, I might as well mention it now, this whole package thing comes with its own cryptocurrency, which has um, four stage security encryption for four layers of encryption. So I will speak about it, but let's not overload us yet. And it also has voice command. To access the device, it has an iris or retina scan, fingerprint, which isn't anything out of the normal. They have that nowadays, I believe. It says these are encrypted and saved to memory to gain continuous access without putting password in each time. This is the tip of the iceberg of what this patent is about. I'm going to briefly explain what the P brain tags A and B do. Divided them up, P brain, P brain, really hard to say, P brain tags A are microcontrollers to mark, track and detect any object. Now throughout this part, it refers to the object and when you read it and understand it, an object could actually be a person, but make up your own mind, see what you think. So technology plus millimeter wave antenna and chip, which is also known as the radiator. It is made from um, two materials, transparent carbon nanowires that can be detected by X-ray or millimeter wave scanners. They're like the scanners you have at airports. The materials are read by the scanner to identify the object and transfer that information back to the cyborg operating system. It will feed back location, etc. It may also give photos and videos if that is what is required. So the operating system can ask for any bit of information it wants and these P brain tags will feed it back and give it what it wants. The RFID and millimeter wave emissions can also track an object outside of the scan areas. Carrying on, the second page, it's the RFID component may be paired with a unique code, the exact same as the material tag code used to identify the object inside the X-ray or millimeter wave scanner. That code may be stored and monitored by either the operating system using the headsets plus the operating systems fully equipped with GPS program to handle this specific kind of object. So that implies to me the object is something that moves about. I still think it's a person. The manufacturing process of P-Brain tags may also be combined with all types of manufacturing processes of RFID chip manufacturing processes as well as combined with RFID materials if necessary. P-brain tags can be made with virtually any two differing materials and may be a wide range of manufacturing processes to address the evolution of many versions of P-brain tags that can emerge from using different tags. They can be submitted to a basic printing process that prints an ultra thin portion of the materials in its correct individual coded alignment, allowing enough material on the label to be detected by the X-ray or millimeter wave scanner. The novel difference with the added RFID chip portion 
is all components such as antennae, chip and casing of that part of the tag, P brain A, may be virtually invisible to the naked eye, aligned or layered in its correct position on the tag. Invisible, eh? The P brain tag can be delivered in a continuous reel of dry inlays on plastic. So that's like um, sticky labels that come out laminated, I would think. They can be tickets, badges, and embedded into different materials to fulfill any specific specific requirements. They can even be used in areas where there are chemicals. They have um, there are specific pea brain tags that they make for uh, dangerous environments. They also have anti-tampering and waterproof resistant access control, ticketing, e-payment, and loyalty program applications being directly attached to metal surfaces, wristbands, bands and key fobs. They can range in materials depending on the environment they are needed most and may be mostly made with flexible materials like plastic and could be attached to any material or object. I'm going to guess that we're all going to be wearing one of these. The materials can then be read by a millimetre wave scanner which would then identify the object then transfer that information of the object to the, we've already said this haven't we, but this one's specifically about employment in the employment setting. So that was tag A. What I'm giving you is just a really brief overview of what these components can do. There are nearly a thousand points and I obviously can't go into all of them. But I'm going to move on now to the high, the, I don't know how you pronounce it, the draped towers and also the 432 millimeter wave, which is just a small version of the tower. Now I like to think of this as the sender of our parcel. It doesn't quite fit, but it is like outside of the box. I didn't know until I read this patent that the 5G masks are actually called Drake Towers. When I search for it in the search engine, nothing comes up. So I'm gonna go through the points as I said, they're not complete, it's not all of them, it's just the main main ones. The hydrate tower, the drate tower, I shouldn't say hydrate, it's different. The drate tower may be made up of a millimetre wave transmitter, receiver, transceiver, modified version or the same version of the radiator technology. If you remember back to one of my little pictures I drew, the radiator technology was the millimetre wave chip with the appropriate band wavelength strength to successfully send digital information to components and or devices designed by that company I mentioned using processors with the appropriate added timing mechanism. As I said, the, uh, the 432mm waves are just small hydrate drape towers with slight ver design variations that allow it to fit on a balcony or backyard, front porch or patio, and used as a solar panel. What you'll find out as I read on is these these uh, small drape towers can also be artificial trees as well as solar panels. So they're intending for us to have these in our home. To save time and create a more connected and efficient system, 432 millimeter waves will continue to cyborg capture via A, which I think is the uh, pea brain tag, if a fire is originating from a unit in which the 432mm wave has been installed into. Separate individual units of the sound blasting. The 432mm wave thing, actually, I didn't mention it. It's the, um, it's like a fire management system. Separate individual units of the sound blasting technology to put out fires will be installed into each unit as part of the fire management system. Third party materials that absorb carbon monoxide in a way that is safe to humans will be installed into the unit walls, floors, ceilings, furniture and any other necessary areas needed as part of the fire management system. It may contain a hollow shaft for a core with space for parking and charging cyborg glider roller. These are electric cars. Up to 500 feet or potentially more if needed. The entrance and exit will also be located here. So these towers have a multi-purpose. 
an elevator device where's it gone an elevator device may secure the uh, the glider roller then transport it up to an available slot that may be pre-booked by the user with the cyborg operating system using the headset the hallelujah high it's headset to be precise there may also be charging ports for other types of electric cars such as tesla if a deal can be reached there may be an extendable umbrella shaped dome attached to the side of the tower about 300 to 350 feet in diameter or any other variation size that is proportionally appropriate. This umbrella shape can be made to cover and give shaded protection from the harmful UV rays above large pieces of land like parks. There may also be a solar panel covering on the dome shaped umbrella like component. It may also be able to rotate on a spherical ball axis to always aim at the direction that the sun is shining. Clever, eh? The solar panel may also be coated in a specialised version of the OLED's uni lens. I'll get to that later. Both the top and bottom of the dome shaped panels, which may be able to display chosen images, but a default image of the country's flag may be set by the cyborg operating system. This is the first mention of it of an indication of this technology and enterprise network being rolled out in different countries. This is actually a Canadian inventor's um, patent. They may be placed at the top of the tower just below the millimeter wave antennas and may have access to the water supply in the reservoir at the bottom of the tower. The reservoir obviously is for the uh, fire management system. The collected carbon dioxide may be used to power a supercritical turbine designed by third party General Electric engineers. The sound blasters, which are the, um, the fire hoses, may be placed directly around the artificial trees above and underneath, but may not interfere with the millimetre wave transmissions. They wouldn't want that, would they? They may be rotor but they may be rotor table to ensure they can be aimed at maximum distance to extinguish fires in their distant range capabilities. Small cell towers may have similar or same components, such as millimeter wave chip emitters as the main towers. They may be separated every 10 meters apart on top of the sidewalk street shading infrastructure that may move when transformation of the in fracture occurs. The shading component may collapse into a box when not in use, located at the end of each intersection, also holding the electricity. This is a strange bit coming up. Users can log into their smart devices and make a vote on if they want the in fracture to be set up. If enough people vote for it, at any given time, it may be set up. The transformative setup is closely monitored by both humans and machine sensors and may roll across the sidewalk at a slow speed to ensure no one gets injured during setup. If anyone is standing in the way, the, set, the setup stops automatically. The structure may stand at least 10 feet and may have specialized unilens coating with solar panels on top which may have diagonal mirrors to maximize the sun's reflection to the panels. The sidewalks may be prepared with a path with ball bearings that may be used for the small cell infrastructure to slide on when transforming. There may be a command panel on every intersection or beside every bus stop that stands at six feet for six feet tall, four feet wide with plugs, UBSs and electric car chargers as well. There may be an elevator for people to enter and exit the shaft in order to park and retrieve their car. 432 mm wave solar shade used as a portable cell tower broadcasting millimeter wave as well third and fourth generation frequency bands so that's 3 and 4G. There may also be used as a shade or canopy that can include transparent or non-transparent solar panels for charging a battery that can be used as backup power supply with a miniature version of an artificial tree that can absorb carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. 
as well as non-transparent solar cells, artificial carbon dioxide trees, P. Brantega A, are combined to create a novel portable home design. Before I talk about the complicated headset functions and settings in detail, I thought I'd mention the Cyborg operating system. This is the thing that owns it all, the big boss, the person who is getting, the personal organisation that is getting all our information that it collects. It's made up of blockchain logic and it has four layers. The first layer is called marking and it consists of an information set that is made up of recorded elements that are identified as the user's personal location history recorded by P-Brain Tag A, bracelet, necklace, ring and jack. Layer 2 is called tagging and you can include members of your family, friends and associates or any group of authorised people that also has any of the same interface devices to pair on Bluetooth or any other pairing method. Each time your locations meet within a chosen radius, including the exact time down to the second and location may be recorded and combined with data provided by marking encryption patterns recorded. This stinks of uh, social distancing. How handy would it be if this was in place? Then it could be recorded how far apart you are. Hmm. Some locations can be omitted based on user request in which this joint location information may serve as an extra layer of security encryption. That is, new encryption pattern will be recorded to all interface devices that has registered as an authorised user to the group. That new encryption pattern will allow anyone authorised to be in this group to use any device in this group with full or limited capabilities of the primary user's device. The Cyborg operating system will alert all devices that each person in the authorised group's biometric and location history data patterns will be compatible with every device in the authorised group. Layer 3 is called calibrating. A third layer of security encryption may come from users that have multiple devices de developed by most. Those devices each have their own P-Brain tags that may use millimeter wave frequencies or other frequency wavelengths to record small movements of the head, body, arms, or fingers, but not limited to these alone. Then from an encryption based on all the minor spatial location changes of that primary personal user, to be recorded in the device's memory, for instance. If the user moved his head several places, each individual one of these places his head moved past in the incremental changes in space may be recorded in as part of the encryption with a simplified version of movements to form the encryption may be used if needed. The stored encryption data will be used as an automatic access key that all P-Brain tags can broadcast the signal communicating to each separate device to give the primary user consistent access at all times without the need of passwords if the encryption pattern is not considered broken. This same security encryption system protocols can also be used to regulate false alarms and specifically false alarms about nuclear missile attacks by merging marking, tagging and calibrating methods to collect location data of a chosen set of authorised individuals to form a clique recognised as an extra unique set that may have all locations marked using P-Brain A. This method is called Blue Alert. The Cyborg operating system in its software version may track by satellite any attacking missiles for about 5 to 10 seconds and record five numbers allocating real-time information about the missile's location. The five pieces of information may be longitude, latitude, altitude, speed and exact time at each location. Now there is a lot more about the nuclear missile thing. I didn't think I should read it all out. That's why I said at the beginning, oh, I've got to have balls to do this. 
and layer four is called marking and tagging and it's used for their trademarked cryptocurrency which is called Ioni. This is the last part I'm going to talk about and it's just a couple of things, differences between the two headsets. I will also speak about a couple of the functions of these. Now I imagine them from the description that they're like these visors that people wear when they're meant to be wearing masks, you know the ones that the long ones that come down because there's lots of description about these headsets. <clears throat> they have screens, they have even up to four screens so this has got to be something that it's obviously transparent that covers your face because it implies that you can be out and about doing it, putting your gloves on and turning it on and whatnot. So because there aren't any diagrams with this the patent, they've all been withheld. The only information I have is these claims, there's just under a thousand of them, and the inventor's name, but there's nothing else to go with it. So I've had to try and imagine what these items are like. Anyway, I'll crack on and then uh, clear up, finish. Like the headsets, the Hallelujah headset is the upgraded version of the Cyborg headset. Do you remember at the beginning I said that this whole thing has to work with the operating system and the two headsets with the P-Brain tags. So these two headsets are different. The Cyborg ones, they um, all elements of the Cyborg headset, manufacturing, materials, components and functionality may be almost identical as in the Hallelujah he manufacturing materials. The differences may be that there's no mohawk crest on the visor, no OLED screens at the back of the head, there may, may be no hallelujah he trademark on the front part of the visor. The uni lens may not be removable from the visor. There may not be any transcranial device components included. There may be an apparatus connecting the uni lens side rectangle casing, right side, left side, not permanently but may attach to the earbuds or speakers. The Hallelujah headset, now everything that goes on beyond this, this is quite long this part and it does say it still is about the Hallelujah headset, it doesn't mention the Cyborg headset anymore after this. So the Hallelujah headset is an interface for the um, Cyborg operating system with kernel processes and subcomponents. The hardware will be compatible with and facilitate virtual reality, augmented reality, PR employee personal home training video game application. Now I think that's a mistake, I think it should say pre-employee, but it says it a couple of times so the specifics. It contains components that are found in transcranial device that fits inside the visor such as a 9 volt battery that is a custom design flat curve shape that fits at the back of the head, a 2 to 3 inches in height and about 2 feet in circumference, about the circumference length of an adult human head and may be about 0.25 centimeters thick or less. This device may also be fitted with a tiny bionic cylindrical earbud that transmits sound wirelessly. This earbud may be operated on an open loop system that shuts off in times of emergencies. The small cylindrical camera casing may have flight capabilities fitted with motor wings or wing. The four small cameras may rest along the cylindrical body of the flight device and take a panoramic view of the environment, so it's like a drone, simultaneously from each camera. Its movements may be controlled by sophisticated programming originating from a control systems platform. This cylindrical flying tube camera, I love that name, piece may fit in the front part of the visor in a secure position that could be launched into flight on command from the Hallelujah He headset. The interface screen component may be either OLED contact lenses or OLED uni lens. The uni lens interface, when it's got this eye after the word, it looks almost normal but it's not, it's their branding. The uni lens interface may be made out of flexible or rigid OLED, see through organic or other material with an overlay display. The interface may be fed uh, it must be pre pre-recorded metadata from previous pick sessions of act 
individual active employees using the employee training application. The UniLens may have all of its components in the rectangular casing to the left and the right that allows easily removable screens. The UniLens may be powered by light being absorbed by transparent solar cells, photodiodes plus batteries on either end inside the rectangle casings. There may also be a light source that originates from the visor that was meant to power the screen. It comes with a pair of bionic earbuds or speakers. These bionic earbuds may serve both as headphone jacks and have the ability to switch to delivering sound directly into the cochlea by transmitting it through the bones behind the ears. These bionic earbud speakers, that are also speakers, may also be able to amplify sound originating from the environment and control the intensity of the sound by increasing or decreasing it depending on what the user wants. Three extra open slots may be available to fit removable and rotating cameras and bionic earbud speakers. These cameras can also be fitted in the cylindrical flying tube camera. Screen sizes may come in all shapes and sizes with the technology to mount screens together for larger viewing and later take them apart. The lighting may follow an automated program controlled by the Cyborg operating system to permanently prevent burnout and screen etchings or markings. All components in UniLens screens especially may be coated in compatible waterproof materials to prevent damage or any malfunction from water and may allow the device to be used underwater. The UniLens screens may also have a microscopic slots for the smallest piece or pieces of reflective material to be placed inside. This material may slide in and out based on command protocols from the operating system with mechanical assistance from described device. The front of the UniLens may also have enabled or adjustable focusing culminating lens. There may also be a laser component that may have all its components wrapped in a rubber tube and fit inside the top cylindrical slot of the uni lens. The OLED contact lenses may use the same technology of overlaying information and images, but it may include superior option like fully immersed, three-dimensional, fully equipped with the ability to interact and touch virtual objects using the interactive gloves. No thank you. The mechanical energy may be made by compression from the eyelids blinking, pushing down on the lens, forcing downwards miniature screw action that turns several miniature microscopic gears at the same time. These gears then turn a larger complete ring located at the outer perimeter of the lens sitting on the microscopic ball bearings for ease of turning. Good grief, these are all in your eyes. Light shining from the visor, body heat or other light source may also be secondary and third power sources to give power to the device as a battery may be included if needed and use wireless charging. Miniature concave, concave lens sitting in the middle of the lens which can be automated to flip 180 degrees using microscopic spindles. This lens may be aligned with convex lens in direct alignment to it connected by a microscopic jack to, char to change the distance between to, to focus an image in magnification or amplification or diminish an image. These features may also be found in the camera that can wirelessly transfer data to the OLED contact lenses. Miniature photo cathode plate, miniature tube and ringed micro channel plate pieces that moves information forming a miniature micro channel plate Unilens and contacts may also have infrared detection technology and night vision as well. These features may also be found in the cameras that can wirelessly transfer night vision, x-ray vision and infrared data to the contacts. And don't forget, it's also going back to the organisation or company. All electrical visual information recorded in the miniature ringed micro channel plate may be used and translated into different forms of electromagnetic energy. The screen may be coated with transparent winnower conductors, they're fan shaped, turning the screen into a recordable lens and may be used to automate pixels. Unilens can also be used for machine vision and other related elements that is commonly used for. 
Screen may finally be coated with a flexible synthetic material that bends in perfect increments up to 180 degree curves. The Omniversal camera may use UniLens technology, complete with machine vision capabilities using global shutter. The camera also has propellers and unibeam functionality. The lens may be made out of transparent winnower conductors that may take in photon information and transmit it to a phosphorus plate combining the data from the two omniversal lens located at the top and bottom of the flying cylindrical device. The OmniLens camera of Hallelujah headset fit a 1cm diameter and a 4cm in height cylinder that may hold up to four cameras. That the gears in the cylinder may turn using protocols from the operating system, allowing the camera to turn 360 degrees horizontally up and down laterally, in individual movements using specialised camera design and DC motors wirelessly controlled. The uni laser comes with the uni lens, all components can be rolled up together into the storage tube. And I'm going to leave it there. I've barely scratched the surface of this patent, I'm telling you it's huge. I've left out things like, I mean you can see if you're a skid cleaner, um, the, was it the electric car that can also fly and all its components. Altogether there are 48 components underneath our major presence in this little box. It's not limited to 48, they can add more when they invent more. But I wanted to tell you about this. I think it's huge. And I think in conjunction with everything else I've found patent wise, this could be a, a big thing into the, well, I don't believe in the vaccine, but I think this could all be, this virus could all be to do with AI. That was going to be my conclusion actually. I did the, um, the COVID videos and I wanted to make a last, well I did make a last one, I just didn't post it because I felt it was superfluous when I found this. I mean this is clearly integrating humans with artificial intelligence and, and things that I never thought we could have. I didn't think we could ever have a camera attached to a visor that will be able to do x-ray vision. It is, I'm not surprised about the, the P tags A, the ones that connect us to the um, the Drake Towers, that didn't surprise me at all, I figured out that was coming. But the rest of it is completely mind blowing. And I really urge you to go and have a look at this for yourself. I haven't manipulated anything, I have copied and pasted things into Word and then made them into images. So I've left them as is. I don't know what do you make of it because I I really can't believe this is nearly 18 months old this patent. It came out last June. Amazing. Anyway, happy reading and I'm really sorry it's been so long.